That looks like shit. You know what? Let's uh, flip that over and start over again. So the next step is to unscrew the crisscross pattern. These four bolts, actually they're numbered, that's pretty handy. One, two, three, four. This is the oil pump support plate. So that's what we're gonna take off next. Let's see if I can zoom in here and you can see what I'm talking about when I say these are numbered. See that one says two, four, three, and one right there. So that's what we're gonna be taking off now. One, two, So there's what I got, cam plate, oil pump bolts, and then the six outer bolts. This looks stupid, I know. I mean, the actual drawing. But this is a very, very handy tool to have. I shouldn't even say tool, just a little thing to do. Because even though you may be replacing bolts and this and that, these will help keep things in order. You have a, It's basically a map of where everything goes whenever you're doing this. And when you're doing stuff like this, that I, like you've never done before, like me, every little bit helps. Using a crisscross pattern loosener, remove the remaining six Allen bolts, securing the cam plate. And two. There's my cam plate map for all my bolts. And I think we just pop this off now. Okay. So there's the cam plate with the cams. Okay, as you can see, the cam plate is off. The cams are out because they're attached to the cam plate. So now we got a few O-rings to take care of. Like this one right here on the oil pump. Lower and upper O-ring, which is here. And here. Um, I will be getting in here and replacing these inner bearings. Um, they do feel like they're in really good shape. Uh, there's no binding or anything. So I'm probably going to replace those. It kind of depends if the gasket kit I get comes with those or not. I'm going to get to the cam plate and actually take the cams out because those bearings will get replaced as well as the cams obviously. I got the snap ring out. It's right there. It helps when you find the right tool for the job. Now we're going to take out these four T20 Torx bits or Torx bolts I should say. This should be fairly straightforward. And this is the cam support plate. Now that just pops out like that. And there's your cam support plate. Now this is where it's saying you need a special tool to push these out simultaneously. I have a brass punch. Let me try that. Quite where I left off last time, battery died in the camera. But I think I was in the middle of getting the cams out. Um, so with that being said, I did get these out. I did have to use that brass punch. 
I mean, they didn't damage anything, not to mention these are just getting replaced anyway, so I'm not too worried about these getting damaged, but in the actual cam plate, nothing was damaged, even though I am replacing these two bearings anyway, so it's not really that big of a deal. So I just wanted to go over some of the new stuff that I got for the valve train. Um, obviously the cams, the fueling Reaper 574 cams. Um, you can just look at the difference in these two. This is the stock Harley cam and this is the fueling cam. There's a monstrous difference in the quality of these. Just even like the casting marks on these. Um, these are all machined, got nice machine edges and everything on them. Obviously, that's the big bulk of this project is the cams. Um, I went ahead and replaced the chain tensioners. Um, this is the old one. This is the secondary one, the one behind the cam plate. As you can see, it's worn down quite a bit. It's actually in pretty good shape for as many miles as this thing has. Um, but I went ahead and bought a new one from JP Cycles. The lifters. Um, these are the fueling HP Plus lifters. These ones are. And these are the stock lifters. I can't lie, they look a lot alike as far as the oil feed hole is the same size. Um, I mean, they look identical. I think the hole in the top of this one is a little bit bigger in the fueling one than in the stock one. Um, but they look very similar. But these are also... They needed to replace. There's some marring on the sides of these. Um, all these scorch marks on the top of it. So... Yeah, might as well accompany new cams and everything with new lifters. Um, new push rods. This was a recommendation from the people at Fueling. Um, just because the high lift on these cams may cause the stock push rods to flex. And these big motherfuckers will not. These things are heavy. Like, they're twice the weight of the stock one. I mean, you can just look at these and tell the difference. Not just even in the tapering at the ends here instead of the ball, but even the thickness of them. These are 0.165 thick wall, 10.4 inch for the intake and 10.525 for the exhaust. So they are stock length, one piece. Um, but yeah, these things are fucking hefty. And this thing feels like tin compared to this. And of course they say fueling exhaust so you don't get them mixed up because they are different lengths. Um, I did buy a new oil pump. It's not here yet. But this is the stock Harley oil pump. Um, I got the fueling, the OE Plus oil pump. And they say it's recommended when you put new lifters in to get the fueling oil pump to accompany the lifters. It'll help them work better. Just to, you know, get this cam chest you know, crack it open one time and hopefully get it done. Obviously, I didn't opt for the cam plate. Uh, that cam plate is quite an investment. I want to say it's like four or five hundred dollars. So, everyone I talked to at Fueling said this cam plate will work. The benefit of the Fueling cam plate is you get the hydraulic tensioners instead of the spring tensioners on the front and on the back. So, you can also do the same thing with a Screaming Eagle cam plate. You can get the hydraulic tensioners, but I've never had issues with these knock on wood so hopefully I can continue that and not have any issues and not have to worry about buying a cam plate for a while yeah I have some other stuff coming the fueling cam install gasket kit that comes with all o-rings all gaskets uh, the new the two bearings for the cam plate um, the inner cam plates for inside the cam chest so things are slowly trickling in other than a couple issues with JP Cycles, with them sending me the wrong damn part. Um, things are going pretty fast. A lot faster than I thought they were going to. Yeah, that's it for the cam chest teardown. I did somehow lose footage on that video. I don't know where the video went, but it was the actual video of me popping the cams out with that punch. And the video of me... Fucking with that sear clip on the um, the front of the cam. The next series of videos is going to be um, the bearings. It's going to be pressing, removing and pressing in the new cam plate bearings, as well as the inner cam bearings with a 
fucking phenomenal little trick that doesn't involve a $120 tool or whatever it is. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be a good one. I was surprised at how good this trick worked. Uh, yeah, a lot of big things going on right now. Uh, I just finished painting the bike. I'm working on sanding and polishing now. So this is going to be a whole new looking bike. It's It looks fucking awesome. I'm still going with the black and gold. But yeah, I can't reveal anything yet. Because it's, it's going to be fucking sick. And now I finally kind of got good at polishing. So everything is going to be a fucking mirror finish. It's going to be great. If you know anyone that needs help with their Dyna. Anyone that owns a Dyna that's, that wants to jump into something like this. Tag them, share them, let them know. So as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting if you're commenting. Thanks for sharing if you're sharing. Uh, spread the word. 